Hey everybody, I'm Lucas. Welcome back to Lucas Grove Homestead. Who are you? Cyrus. <laughs> Alright, so today we're going to do our weekly homestead tour slash garden tour. We're going to do this all summer long so that we can keep track of our progress as we move through the summer. So where do you want to start? Mm, maybe right here by the carrots, the first row of carrots. Yeah, the carrot carrots. Carrot's not been such a great thing for me ever, and that continues to be the case. And you can see right here we have all of about 15 carrots or so growing out of out of three rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that a failure. Everything we planted this, on that day did not come up very well. Radishes, same problem, right? My goodness. Just a couple radishes and we got, yeah, there's a bunch of carpenter ants, huh? It's a whole like ant colony. So what we got here is our uh, zucchinis, <clears throat> and then onions are doing pretty good. We've got three rows of onions here. We've got these are yellow Spanish, and then we get what these are, and then these are red. I think those are those are candy onions, and then we have some Stuttgart starts over here. That's what this row right here is. Looks really nice and green. Our spinach is coming along. Got some baby spinach here. It's probably to the point where you could go ahead and eat some, but we're gonna let it grow a little bit before I pull anything off. But it, that whole row looks pretty good. And then we've got some leaf lettuce coming in right here in this row, looking pretty strong. Our cabbages, they're starting to head out. Starting to get a little head in there. See down here. And then we've got our Alicia Craig onions. The Alicia Craigs are doing okay, but you know, it is what it is. It's the first year I've ever grown them, so we'll see how they end up. Probably could have done a better job getting them started. So, Tell me about it. Well, the rye is now up to right here. So the rye cover crop is getting really close. It's getting really close to being crimped. And you can see right here, it's starting to put a head on already. Head's coming out. I would say, I would say within the next week, we should be able to crimp this off and get everything from the greenhouse in here. You got me? Yeah. You're not cutting my head off? And yeah. So you can see the rye on me, I'm 6'3", and it's already at my belly button. So it's almost four foot tall. But that's why we caught everything in the greenhouse and why everything's a little further behind because we're waiting on the rye to make sure that we have good mulch layer. Speaking of the greenhouse, let's go check it out next. So this, so the greenhouse has been up and down for us this year. We've had some issues, we've had some good stuff, but you know, we just keep battling. That's all you can do when you're gardening. These guys right here are having a bad day today. It's Sunday. I was working on editing and the wife went to the store and we both forgot to open this up. So it got a little hot in here, so they needed some some emergency water. Everything else in here, we'll see if this fogs you up or not, but everything else is looking pretty good. good. These are the starts that we just got going last week. These are pumpkins and let's see, what are these? Watermelons, yellow zucchinis. These are blacktail mountain watermelon. So far, butternut squash have not, not one butternut squash has come up, but everything else is doing pretty good. We got uh, Big Max pumpkins. We've got Jack B. Little Pumpkins. We've got a couple of those coming up. We've got Howden Pumpkins, they're coming up. And we got Birdhouse Gourds that are, well, nope, no Birdhouse Gourds yet. Look at this one, he still has his sleeve ticking up. Yeah, he's still got his seat on him, doesn't he? Yeah, and this one too. These are pepper starts that we started last week and tomato starts that we started last week. They're actually doing pretty decent. We've got fourth leaves coming on a lot of these and I think they'll probably be a good six inches tall by the time next week rolls around and it's time to plant out. Of course, these tomatoes, they're getting way too big. You want to pick one of these up? There you go. So these tomatoes are getting way too big for the greenhouse. They really need to be planted out so they can get some stakes on them. They'll, those things will probably start blooming here for too awful long. And then for this week, we need to get these fellas weeded out. Look, we kind of forgot about them back here in a the corner, didn't we? These are Atlantic Giant Pumpkins. 
I planted them early with the hopes of being able to grow a monster for the August fair that we go to. So we'll see what happens. We got the, what are these? These are OS cross watermelons. So those are the giant watermelons. And then, you know, more tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, more tomatoes. There's some herbs down here that are going pretty strong. All right, you coming? This is too hot in there. Don't you think it's too hot in there? Yeah, I, got, I just got a little sweat here coming down my forehead. <laughs> you want to show them the uh, poppies? Oh, yeah. So we have poppies now. So oh, they lost their flowers already, huh? Yeah, it's just these left. So what are those? Those are... Seed pods? Yeah, those are the orange poppy seed pods. And what's your plan with those? Um, so we're going to harvest the seeds and we're probably going to make a little business. You are? Yeah. Doing what? Selling these, basically, and selling other plants, like... Okay. I'm just waiting for them. They're going to a lot bigger than this. A lot bigger. Okay. All right, moving on. What's next? So, for some reason, these weren't here when they started being moved in. Do you know what they are? No, not exactly. Maybe you should look that up and find out. Yeah. But they just started here when they first If you could smell them, you wouldn't think they're as pretty as they as they look. They they smell just like a pear bloom. So. Don't smell very good, do they? I couldn't really get to smell. Well, there's a little ant. All right, you ready to go up to the farm? Yep, let's go. So we made great progress on the orchard this week. It's looking really good. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a little bit of work to do before we can get some uh, cover crop down in here so we can protect this soil. But you can see this plot right here, which is in the middle of the orchard now, which was on the outside edge, is this was rye and this is all coming in nicely but we've got all of these trees opened up now we've got cherries and apples and you know apples and apples and other apples we got to remove these cedar trees this week but other than that it's looking pretty good you can see like if you notice this cedar tree in the shadow that it cast on that that on that apple tree over there we want to get rid of that so that we can open that up and those cedars are they really cause a problem, especially in this open soil out here. They're going to uh, create issues with new cedars coming up, and we just don't want that. Those are It's basically like having a giant weed in the middle of your orchard. You can see the progress we made this week. It's really looking great. These apple trees should start to thrive. They look misshapen and misformed and just about every kind of mess you can think of. But here over the next month, I think we should start to see a lot of improvement here. This was... This was always going to be our big project for the year and already it's just, I mean, it's the first week of May. So, well, yeah, first full week of May and it's already looking like this and I couldn't be happier. We'll get up here, we'll get some cover crop planted on this over the next few weeks and we're going to make this pop. You imagine this right here, just looking all green all the way across through there. It's going to be great. All right, let's head over to the uh, field to see how the potatoes and corn are doing. I had a six foot, couldn't seem to get it. Couldn't seem to get it? No. Wait, I put on my nature's hiking stick. Okay, yeah, you don't want to lose that, you won't be able to find a replacement. What? So if you lose that, you won't be able to find a replacement. Well, there's probably plenty of replacements around here, but I just like this one. <laughs> you can see the apple trees, they're already starting to set their apples. That's the first sign that we're going to have a fruit crop. There's quite a few of them on up in here. so. There's a decent chance that me opening this tree up last fall, this was the first apple tree that I saved last year and it's already producing, so that's a that's a good omen for the year. What did you make now? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know how this was stuck to another stick in the first place. Ugh, so this has gotta be one of the So this has gotta be one of the projects we take care of in the coming weeks. This thing is getting all overgrown. This is our lane that goes down from the top of the ridge to the bottom of the ridge. And man, it, it needs addressed bad. So I'm gonna mark this and hopefully in a couple weeks, I can show you what it looks like afterwards. So this was the corn we planted this week. We uh, sprayed it down two days ago, so it still hasn't had the kill on it yet, but 
Thankfully, we don't have any germination yet. I just want to come and check to make sure that we don't have germination, and then we'll take care of the we'll take care of the weeds. We'll probably come in and roll these down um, either Monday or Tuesday before we get the the corn to germinate above ground, and that should give us a nice flat dead mat that we can work on for the rest of the year. Our hope is is that the way we time this out is that this wall will be dead, the corn will come up, and then we won't have to worry about too much in the way of weed problems for the first 12 inches of growth. Typically, typically that's about a two month period. We'll have to see what happens. We do have uh, the cultivator already ready to go just in case we have to use it. But for right now, we're just hoping that this plan works like we have it set up. So let's take a look at the potatoes. So the potatoes are looking pretty decent, huh? See nice little rows of potatoes. We got some grass issues we need to work on, but we were supposed to get that straw down, but we never got it taken care of. So I guess we earned a little bit of weeding, huh? Oh, because of the rainstorm. Yeah, because of the rainstorm. We might go ahead and bring the chisel or the cultivator up here. We might go ahead and bring the cultivator up here and just take care of this this week and uh, get these weeds knocked down and then go ahead and uh, get the straw mulched out here. But I mean, they're looking pretty good. Some of these potatoes are pretty good size. But you can see here, what I was telling you about these no-till potatoes in the video that we did, is that when you do them the way we do, they come out of the ground in three to four different places. Like this one came out in two different places, two different places, one place. But a lot of times you'll see them clustered like this. Like that one over there is doing the same thing or that one right there is doing the same thing. When you open up a round circle around them, it lets them bush out, which seems to give us better yields. Overall though, I'd say this is gonna be a pretty good crop. What do you think? Yeah. You excited about them? You planted these. It does look pretty good. <coughs> I never expected these to do that in like, I don't know, three or four weeks. Yeah, it's been about three weeks since you planted them. Yeah. Alright. I'm ready to have some yummy mashed potatoes plus cut potatoes from these. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. And purple mashed potatoes. Oh yeah. So, looks like we got a little bit of weed issue to take care of this week, but next Sunday you'll see no problems. It'll be covered in straw. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it sure already can taste the potatoes in my mouth. Can you? Yeah, the cut ones. So this was our other big project of the week that we got taken care of it makes me feel a whole lot better i'll tell you that we got this culvert in here so we could get the tractor back and forth between those fields and these fields and it looks like it's doing pretty good <coughs> oh froggy but yeah culvert's coming out pretty nicely it looks like the inflow is pretty good don't have any major blockages sitting below the creek level Everything looks good. What do you think? Yes, first time you've seen it, isn't it? Yeah. Plus, I feel like this is more wider. It is. Than the old one? Yeah. Yeah, it is. You thought long and hard about that one, didn't you? What? You thought long and hard about that wish, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll check the two last fields. These we'll have to start working on in the next week or two. Same situation as everything else. It's all covered in rye. You can see rye, rye. This is this is where we'll end up planting uh, blue hopi corn and uh, green beans and some other stuff. We'll have some strange varieties in here. We'll have some <coughs> we'll have some sorghum and some tomatoes and some other things over here. What? Those, those are off of the uh, uh, autumn olives. Oh. Yeah, I know. Are those their seeds? <coughs> yeah, the pollen's really thick right now. I can taste it in my tongue. So this is our last rye stand. This is a pretty decent rye stand. This right here is all going to get converted into buckwheat. So we'll bring the planter over here. We'll plant buckwheat in here. Probably, oh, what is today? Today's May 15th, so... We will plant buckwheat in here, not this week, but the week after that. 
And then that'll be a summer cover crop that we'll have in here. And we might come in and harvest some buckwheat for ourselves. We'll have to see what we decide to do. But more than anything, we're in here to help build soils. So. It looks pretty nice though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You think this field looks nice? Yeah. Rye for everyone. Rye for everyone, yeah. We could let it go to we could let it go to seed and make bread, but we're not gonna do that this year. We don't wanna to steal the energy just yet, so like I said, part of the uh, homestead channel is about me learning how to do those sorts of things and baking bread and doing the other things that maybe I'm not very good at or I don't take the time to make sure I get done. So the first year on this homestead, we're gonna make sure we do it right. And we're gonna focus on learning the skills we need to cap off the little things that we don't know how to do before we go planting or harvesting rye to make bread when we don't when I don't know how to make rye bread. So you know, don't put the cart before the horse or something like that. I don't know what those old timers say about that kind of thing, but it seems familiar. Our own cooking show. You're gonna have your own cooking show? We are. Are we? Okay. Yeah, he's right. We're gonna do a cooking show where we show you exactly how a novice learns how to do things. So, not something you're here to learn from, it's something that you're here to maybe amuse you. And, you know, if you really feel like you need to leave comments, then it helps those people that, that need to tell people how to do things. So, you know, we're trying to do our part. Still throwing rocks in the creek. I like it. All right, you want to wrap up the video? Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video. He's getting pretty good at that. <laughs>